Back in the 1950s when I was a kid, it was a lot harder to buy electronic components. There was a number of radio wholesalers, they called them, and they used to basically sell to the trade. The thing which I most regret myself is that we can no longer easily buy old military electronic equipment at disposal stores. All the radio shops, you had Waltham Trading Company with all the army disposal stuff, that was there until the, the 50s. That, I'm sure, contributed a great deal to many of the people who became electronic hobbyists amateur radio hobbyists, computer hobbyists, because you could get all sorts of interesting things, pull them apart, work out how they worked, and put them together in different configurations. Most of them have since uh, gone. But there aren't really the big disposal stores like there used to be like that. Well, they've had to close, really, I mean, or, or change what they do, because the interest has changed. The guys that came back from the Second World War, who started up radio shops, as they call them, who basically sold World War II surplus, they've all died. In my early days when I worked at Ducon Condensers and EMI, well of course these companies made electronics, so I had no trouble getting most of the parts that I wanted. Because of my position in the company, I was able to get those components pretty much for li very little money. So I was I was privileged in that respect. And I used to get my dad to go into Price's Radio, which was in Angel Place in Sydney, and he'd buy the components for me after I'd saved up. I was sold newspapers, I delivered for the chemist. When I got a bit more knowledge, my dad printed a little card that said, Dick Smith can fix your mantle radio. And I put it around in people's letterboxes, and that made good money. Yes, there were quite a lot of people sold components. In the city, uh, it was McGrath's, they were very good. Oh, at the time, there was quite a few. We had Radio House. All electronic components. Stewart Electronics. In Melbourne they had the general accessories. Ham Radio Supplies, you had Collins Radio, you had Car Camera Company, you had Motor Spares and all sorts of other little places you could go to. There, there did seem to be a lot more component suppliers around back then. And in the electronics magazines or radio magazines, Radio and Hobbies, you'd have ads and you'd quite often buy, they didn't call it really mail order, but you'd sort of buy by mail order. There certainly were hobby shops that used to sell electronics, but they were very much old school, typical, just old school, very mouldy old places really, dusty, full of dusty people, <laughs> you could almost say. So it was harder to get components. There weren't very many uh electronic stores but some of them did have the parts out the back and it was very very slow. You used to have to stand behind a counter and wait up to half an hour to get served and famous George Browns, the electrical wholesalers in Sydney, there'd be fist fights behind the counter because people would say you're being served in front of me. There was a shop in Clarence Street in Sydney where you had to go called George Brown and Co and it was in a basement and all of the people who served you were in grey dust coats and you had to go down the steps and grab a number as you went like a pastry shop now and stand there for 20 minutes and ask these people who were rather resentful types because they didn't want to deal with 12 and 13 and 14 year olds they felt that they were professionals and they should only deal with professionals you'd say can I have one quarter watt 22 ohm resistor so the bloke would then wander out the back and disappear for about half an hour come back with one resistor then he'd write it on the docket and it would be one resistor 12 cents plus 27 and a half percent sales tax the other shops everything you know it was just a counter what do you want remember this was before electronic calculators they didn't exist i can't remember how he'd probably get a slide rule to work out the tax and work that out and say so you'd take an hour to buy 10 minutes worth of goods to me mcgrath's was the real revelation because Apart from them, and that, at that time, and I'm talking 50s, you had to go, you had to know what you wanted, you'd go up to a counter and you'd have this important looking man behind the counter, you'd ask him for what he wanted and he'd bring it down off the shelf and give it to you, like the old fashioned grocer shop. But McGrath's was like the new fashion self-service, was all laid out and you could go and pick up the parts you wanted and fill up a tray and go and pay for them at the counter and this was terrific. In Melbourne there was around about six to eight stores within a few a few blocks of each other so you could do the rounds, you could basically go to Beckett Street and what has become J Car and there was Rod Irving, they were literally across the street from each other. In Lonsdale Street there was Ultronics. But there was also Radio Parts in Spencer Street in the city which was the main hub of Radio Parts for this old industry. That was the original shop, or one of them. It stocked a lot of stuff, wonderful things. If you couldn't find or swap, you had to go to the shop. And uh, in Newcastle, the shop was Martin Delaunay's. 
and you'd have to pay real money when you went in there. There were things that you just couldn't buy and you had to make them yourself. If you didn't have a kit, you just scrounged around and got the parts from various sources. Electronics back then or radio was a lot more expensive compared to your average ways than it is today. Uh, electronics is one of the things which has dropped dramatically in price. I remember quite clearly that a resistor from Mellor Brothers in Railway Parade Burwood cost one shilling, which was a huge amount of money. And I used to skimp and save to buy one transistor at £3.17 and sixpence. Imagine that. Over seven dollars and that's when the average wage was probably thirty or forty dollars a week. So you needed a bit of expertise in sourcing components, which if you're serious you would it would become a skill. I, I spent all my spare time and all my money in in an electronic outlets, just buying whatever uh, I thought I could do something with. When the stores were all concentrated in the city, that was made things a lot easier. Going back to the early 70s, as far as electronic stores are concerned, there were certainly quite a few when you counted them all up. Well, in the 70s, when hobbyists uh, started to really get into electronics again, some stores opened that were more like supermarkets. You could actually feel, touch and see the products, and often when you thought you wanted a certain one, to be able to see it just confirmed it, or otherwise you might go, oh, that's not quite the right uh, size or shape or whatever you need. In the past, we'd, we'd go to, any, uh, to half a dozen stores in the city and just uh, wander around the bins and, and see what things were available. You could pick them up and touch them and, and ask someone behind the counter about, you know, was this the right component for this job? When you ask for something, you need to know what you want. Often they could give you a, a quite a, an incredible answer because they themselves are enthusiasts. After a while, you get to know what question to ask and who to ask. Yes, in the old days, you used to be able to walk in there and say, yes, I wanted to build this or I had this problem fixing something and the guy behind the counter would have an idea if not the solution. But then Dick Smith uh, started up in New South Wales. Dick came on the scene as the car radio nuts so he was really selling a car radios when they were an option in a car. And this is where Dick Smith came along in the very late 60s early 70s and started up Dick Smith Electronics. I remember it was about 1971 or something I wound down the shutter at Gore Hill of my two-way radio and car radio installation business. I said, no, that's too hard work lying under dashboards installing radios. I'm going to sell electronics and I'm going to do it in a revolutionary way. The difference between those stores and Dick Smith Electronics is whereas Dick Smith set up what was basically a self-service electronic supermarket, all these other places you waited at the counter and you asked them to go and get some bits and they'd trottle off behind some counter somewhere and go and get them and it was a long drawn out process. I revolutionised it because I said we're just going to have self-service. 